Paul, just, just where the hell is this supposed to be leading us? I gave you this information out of my free will. I expect you two to return the favor. No more feuding. What do you say? Yeah, um... Listen, when you get this message, please call me back right away. This is David Rinaldi. I have sort of an urgent thing to discuss with you, Mr. Naringer. Thank you. Goodbye. That was my piano tuner. I left a message on his answering machine. I have no idea if he's going to be able to help us, but it's worth a try. Yeah, well, anything would be better than what I'm doing here, because I'm not getting anywhere fast with this stuff. Listen, they do have different editions of this music available, don't they? I wasn't going to say anything. Yeah. yeah, well, I'm going to go home and get one. At my house, I've got this really great book on codes. It has all the great codes of the First World War and the Second World War. It had the uh, Norden bomb site, the Normandy invasion, everything with Betty Grable's home phone number. You, you've worked with secret codes in your other job, haven't you? No, I never had the time for it. That, I would generally get an assignment related to some particular individual, and I would just carry that out. Forgive me if I'm prying, but you've had some exposure to situations like this Christophori thing? No, no, I never dealt much with things. Yeah, well, I realize you're no longer in covert operations. You came in from the cold as it were. Right, but the San Carlos look, thing look, is a different... Look, I'm retired, all right? Somebody just attacked my... the person that I love, and they tried to kill her, so I'm back. And I'm going to try to help chase down that treasury because he wants it, and I want him. Yeah, what are you doing here? Well, I was, I was uh, on my way to see Cassie. I guess I got kind of lost. Sure did. You're on the wrong floor. Yeah, I, I forgot where she lived. I was, I was walking through. I saw the doors were open. I looked in. I saw this great old piano. I guess I couldn't, you know, resist checking it out. Um, you know, she's really in good shape. Someone's kept it in very good shape. Yeah. Okay, come on. Let's clear out. You uh, wouldn't be interested in selling this, would you? I, I don't have a lot of money, but I uh, have a job with a Philharmonic. I could work something out with payments or something. Mm, well, you see, I don't own it. Oh, uh, well, who, who does? Lucinda Shank. She's going to use it here in her nightclub. Ah. Uh, However, the guy who tunes it tells me he goes out of tune all the time because it's so old, so... Who knows, maybe she, she would be willing to sell it. Yeah, uh, would it be all right if I talked to her about it? Yeah, I guess so. When she gets back, she's in Texas. Can we, can we go now? You know, the thing is, with instruments like this, sometimes they, they get out of tune, you know, just because they're so old. I'd be real quiet. If it'd be all right, I'd just uh, maybe check it out, see what the problem is. Simon, I'm tired. I want to go home. Okay? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Oh, uh, by the way, could you uh, direct me to Cassie's room? Sure. You go down in the lobby, you pick up the house phone, you call her. If she wants to see you, she'll tell you the sweet number. Well, I'm a friend. I think it'd be okay if you gave me the number. Well, you see, there's friends and there's friends. It's my job to protect my guests, okay? All right. Good night. Good night. Simon, the lobby's that way. Right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, I really do. I marvel at her. She's so many things simultaneously. I mean, she's a, you know, she's a frightened little child who asked me politely, would you mind keeping the door open when there's a thunderstorm? <laughs> and at the same time, she's a very forceful young woman. The other night, I heard her say on the phone to room service, she says, my father wants his steak medium rare, and if you guys can't figure out how to keep that steak rare when it's on his way up to the suite, then you just make sure it's rare when it leaves the kitchen. That's my daughter. <laughs> 
You are the perfect picture of the proud parent. Yeah, absolutely. It occurred to me that I was biased, but then I just decided she is extraordinary. Mm. You don't have to convince me of that. <laughs> I know her. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it isn't the magic lady's ex-husband. How are you? Derek Bland, National Intruder. Oh. And our ever-popular anchor person, Edwina. It's always good to run into a journalistic colleague. If I thought you were my colleague, I'd get out of the business. Edwina, always that dry sense of humor. So tell me, Edwina, off the record, of course, what have you heard about the troubles at the Banner? I don't believe I've heard anything. <laughs> hey, this is me, Derek. Surely you've heard the Banner's about to go belly up. And why else would Vicki Buchanan suddenly be forced to sell the Lord Manning plant? Oh, is she thinking of doing that? Oh, my unimpeachable sources report that Vicki is desperately trying to unload Lord Manning so she can keep the banner afloat. Which I suppose is her prerogative. Although it does seem slightly callous of her to put all those people at the plant out of work just so she can keep playing newspaper girl. Mr. Bland, Miss mm -hmm. Lewis and I are having a pleasant conversation. You'd be good enough to just sort of take yourself off somewhere. Well, I'll just catch this week's edition of The National Intruder. The Vicki Buchanan story is fabulous. It's got everything. Everybody's little darling revealed as a cynical capitalist. The whole fallen princess syndrome. You must not have heard me. I said you're interrupting us. No, I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> See you, Edwina. Let me know when you want to come aboard the intruder. Defending his murderer would be a snap. <laughs> Let's hope so, because it might be me. <laughs> Whew. Those poor uh, Lord Manning employees reading all that trash about Vicky. You think she really might have to close the plant? I don't know. Excuse me for a minute. I think I should what? call her and warn her. Yes. Yeah, sure. We were having such a nice time, too. Yeah. <laughs> No, I don't think we ought to trust the old man. What's he really doing here in the first place? Huh? It's sure not to try to hold his family together. What in tarnation are you all fighting about? You got a grievance against me? Spit it out. Spit it out? What do you think the two of us have been doing, huh? We're tired of listening to how you think we ought to hold this family together when you've done nothing but use us, spy on us, risk our lives. You go along with that, Clint? Paul. Look, we cannot, we will not help you steal from poor people. Now, that's all there is to it. Get it through your head. Hey, all right. Burn the damn money. No, better yet, put in your favorite charity. Charity? We're not talking charity here. We're talking robbery here. Gentlemen, please. The children are trying to sleep. I am trying to talk on the telephone, and, Bo, you have a phone call. I'm sorry, Vicki. Please. I'll take it here. Uh... All right. Okay. Just try not to wake the children, all right? Sorry. Bo Buchanan. Uh, Mr. Buchanan, uh, th it's Esmeralda. Uh, Esmeralda Lionel. Ah. Uh, they said to call you here. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, well, I'm sorry it took so long, but my business manager was very hard to get a hold of. Well, I understand that. Uh, what did he say? Well, we have not sold the Cristofori. Are you still interested in it? Oh, yes, indeed. I am very interested. Pa, uh, how about another drink? No, no, later, later. Well, I'm anxious to sell it. <laughs> when do you want to see it? Well, I'm ready right now. At uh, this hour? Yes, ma'am, if that's at all possible. Well, I, I, I suppose I could reach Mr. Catherwood. Uh, if he runs the warehouse. Uh, <laughs> uh, let me see. Um, uh, he might be willing to, to get us in tonight, but uh, that is if you're inclined to make a donation of a little something <laughs> for his trouble. Well, I'm very inclined to do just that very thing. Yes, ma'am. Well, of course, it means I'll have a bit of a chore getting down there, too. Well, uh, let me try to see if I can find him, and I'll call you back. Uh, the piano really is beautiful, but it's such a white elephant. <laughs> well, I'll see you shortly. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, Clint, can I use your phone in the library? Yeah, sure. Great. Hey, whoa, whoa. What? Got a little late date, huh? Oh, Pa, yeah. No fooling you, is there? Hmm? <laughs> tickets? I mean, I really tickets. <laughs>